You are about to witness the very exciting story of a city and its people. Welcome to motherfucking Detroit. This is Detroit Bell and the No Name Podcast. If you have not done it, please go over to our YouTube page and subscribe. Hit that like button, bing. Hit that subscribe button, bang. And hit the notification button, bing, boom, 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 bang. You get everything that we upload. For instance, we go live every Monday and Friday from 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time to 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And we talk about everything sports. So that means NBA, NHL sometimes, um, uh, and M M God, what's the other one? M- MLB. Uh, sometimes we do college. I mean, we do some of all the sports. We touch on a lot of different sport topics. We are a heavy NFL subject matter when it comes to that, but we do try to touch on most of the major sports. So if you are a sports fan and you just want to chop it up by sports, jump in the chats. Um, you know, and get to come on, watch us live and we can talk about sports. Also, if you are a Jet fan and you just want to talk about everything Jets, uh, the big homie Nick Shine, his um, Proud Jets fan page is there too. And if you are a Chiefs fan, you can go to watch Wildcard Chief and he talks everything Kansas City Chief. But over here, we talk everything Detroit Lions on the No Name Podcast. And as you can see from the title, we're going to talk about post draft. I've been gone for a while, been on hiatus, had to go on vacation, um, celebrate with the fam and stuff like that. But I'm back and I watched the draft um, both days and I kind of watched my little vacation on the third day. Let me say this, though, before we get into the show, too. NFL is king. They had you talking everything NFL from the offseason on to now. And then especially with the last three days of the draft from Thursday to Sunday, we were talking NFL. NFL, when it comes to marketing, know what they're doing. Know what they're doing. So my hats go off to the NFL when it comes to that. So first, I'm gonna give you my initial reaction when I when I was watching day one, and I saw they took um, Gibbs. I was like, "Oh my god, why are they taking Gibbs? They passed on Carter, they passed on uh, Tyree Wilson, they passed on." I'm like, "What are they doing?" And then second pick, they picked Campbell, which I I wanted to see uh, Trent um, Trent Simmons um, from uh, Clemson. But they, they got Campbell, I was like, okay, well, at least they got a linebacker. So, you know, I kind of like, all right. So then the second pick, I was like, oh, please, uh, Pittsburgh, don't pick Joey Porter Jr. Let him get Joey Porter Jr. Pittsburgh get Joey Porter Jr. I'm like, oh, man, no, all the good picks. Because, oh, let me back up. I wanted them to get um, Gonzalez. So they got opportunity to get Gonzalez. No, we can get Gonzalez at 15. I was like, oh, come on, man. So, who did, so anyway. Get to second round, they pick on um, Laporta. I'm like, who? Why the heck they picking Laporta over Mayor? Mayor supposed to be Mayor and uh, Ken K supposed to be the best tight ends out there, and then maybe Laporta. You know, I'm like, oh, they, oh come on, Lance. So I'm going this roller coaster up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down. What are y'all doing? So then, you know, I start watching some of the, like I always do, I watch some of the Lion shows, you know, and I'm listening to everybody saying it's the worst draft ever and this and that, blah, blah, blah. So, like, like for me, let me say this about me. You know, I'm a type of person, I'm going to try to see how this person is thinking so I can understand how they're thinking before I make a decision on whether I agree or disagree with them. And... So I started watching the press conference and I waited till like the whole entire draft was over, including UDAs and everything, see what they pick. And I kind of analyzed that's kind of lovely why I didn't want to hurry up and jump in and make a video too, because I wanted to kind of just see how everything shakes out. 
And then I come to a conclusion because I was on this up and down with like, what is Brad Holmes doing? What are they? You know, I can't, I can't taste this. You know, what are they doing? And then you know, I start listening to some people, and they are like, if we disagree with them, then I'll, or if I if I show any kind of support towards this draft, I'm a slappy. Well, no, not really. I just sometimes I just I look at things from a different perspective, and. It had nothing to do with me being slight because Brad Holmes would say something I disagree with. I'm going to say, no, nah, I, don't, I don't agree with that. You know, and I have made videos where I disagree with some of the things he did or question some of the things he did and wasn't sure about some of the things he did. But at the same time, if I see something I like, I'm going to praise it. And so I look at it for like this. What did the Lions need? Well, we know we needed A, we need a corner. We need a linebacker. We need a depth on the offensive line. Probably need to get a receiver because for the six uh, games that JMO is suspended. And we probably needed some uh, special team help. Oh, I'm sorry. And a, a backup quarterback. Because, you know, Nate Suffield just not a great backup quarterback. So as you start looking how things shaking out, shook out, and, and you got the trade from DeAndre Swift. Uh, whether or not you agree to trade or not, that's a whole other discussion. But just based on needs, Brad Holmes filled all the holes that we need. He got a replacement for DeAndre Swift in, J- in Jameer Gibbs. He got the linebacker in Jack Campbell. He got a replacement for TJ Hawkinson with Sam Laporta. He got one of the best safeties in diversity, a diversified safety in Brian Branch. So now he feels a safety knee and also a cornerback knee because he can play corner in an, you know, he can probably play corner in nickel. He got the back of quarterback knee filled with uh, Hendon Hooker. He got the T D tackle filled with Broderick Martin. He got your backup O line help in Kobe uh St. Sordell. He got a receiver in Antoine Green. Then you go over to the UDH. He gets another offensive tackle out of Baylor with Connor um, Gavin. Gets another linebacker out of Illinois with Isaac, um, Isaac um, Dark Angel, Dark Angelo. Then he gets here. This is another another pick. I think that goes under the radar. He gets another quarterback, Adrian Martinez, who is similar to Hendon Hooker. He the poor man sent Hendon Hooker. So that means you know definitely get rid of Nick Suffield. Now you got two pretty good backup quarterbacks. If Adrian Martinez develops, he can be a backup quarterback to Hendon Hooker if they decide to move on to Jared Goff. Now you got two solid quarterbacks. Then you look at um a Humbert Abraham or Ibrahim out of Minnesota. Now you got another running back. So you might move on with Craig Reynolds, Justin Jackson. I can't remember if they got rid of Justin Jackson yet or not, so that's why I mentioned it. You get another corner in Sterling Thomas from UAB. You get another offensive tackle, offensive lineman, Brad um, Cecil out of South Florida. Another offensive tackle, Ryan uh, Swarbita, Swarbit, UCF. Another receiver in Chase Coda, who probably ended up being a special team because he, he has a long stride. But you know how to break away speed. So he probably could be a good gunner somewhere on special teams out of Oregon. Another safety in Brandon Joseph who looks like from Notre Dame. He looks like he might be pretty good or pretty decent. Let me say that if he, if he develops. Um, defensive, another defensive lineman in Zach Morton out of Akron. Another wide right receiver, um, was it Keaton? Um, I, I think it's Keaton Thompson out of Virginia. Defensive tackle Chris Smith out of Notre Dame. And from the great Saginaw Valley State, you got another linebacker from Trevor. Uh, no, was no, no whiskey and no whiskey, no whiskey, something like that. So you got backup. You got backups here. Not all of them might not make the team, but you got enough hodgepodge of different players that you can pick from. And if they develop, you got depth in every position. Depth in every position. So I I like it now. I didn't like it at first, 
I'm starting to, it's starting to warm up to me. Now, is uh what's my man name? Is Roger Martin gonna develop and be a great nose tackle? I don't know. But I think if you look at what the Lions have done with other players and how they develop other players, if they can polish up what he he's weak in, and he polish up his weakness, and polish up his technique, he can be that defensive tackle that you need that you got in on the cheap. That's another thing I like. I'm a big a big believer in if I can get if I can find diamonds in the rough as a business person, then you're doing great because then you don't have to pay them as much. You can keep the salary cap down. And as this team start to get momentum and become better and better as a team, it don't make it's not so hard to sign so many players because you aren't paying as much. And that's so hard. I'm gonna say that's so hard to get uh, stay on a salary cap because now you got um, players that you don't have to pay as much to so keeping that salary down versus you have all um, high draft picks. Now you pay, you got to figure out how to keep them all on your team. So let's see what happens. Let's see how it shakes out. Is it disappointing because they didn't get the Joey Porters and the Gonzalez and the uh, Nolan Smiths of the world. Yes, it's a little disappointing on that level. But it's just interesting how I heard people say prior to the draft, man, hold this so much in free agency that, you know, he can go anywhere, anywhere in the draft. I don't care who he draft first and uh, who, how he draft. Um, I'm going to stick with him and, and hold we trust and this and that. And as soon as he do something we don't like, everybody's talking about it's the worst draft in the world. Now, that's not me. Not, once again, I keep saying this. I know somebody will get in the comments talking about I'm a slappy. It's just me looking at it from di- from a different perspective than you're looking at. I'm not saying that I agree with everything Holmes done here or in general, but I like to look at things from a different slant, different angle, and different perspective. And I think if you look at it from a outside totality, uh, totality, and it's a totality, and look at okay, all the needs have been filled. Yeah, are they question marks, but there's question marks in Jalen Carter. It's no guarantee Jalen Carter will be a star. The, you know, you would think because of the of the higher in talent or higher in, what's where I want to look for? Maybe not talent, but the higher potential is there because of way he play, you know, and the talent is there. So you're looking at, okay, so it's a greater chance that he may succeed. But there's a lot of players that came out of big schools who did well in college and they have a great pro career. There's players that came out of college who had who became injury prone. It's no guarantee with none of these players. So if you can get a Broderick Martin to become a Bruce Smith who came out of small school, you know, or if you can get Antoine Green become a, a, a I'm not even gonna call out a receiver because I won't say oh you trying to say you gonna be no I'm saying that but we could you get the Antoine Green to come a a great receiver a good receiver I don't say great a good receiver from the University of North Carolina then you call him Brad Holmes a genius and it's not only about Brad Holmes it's more about me looking at the draft from a different perspective I I keep re- reiterating that because I know how we get in these comments. You know what I'm saying? I know how we get in these comments. I'm looking at what he did, what we have, what we needed. I'm with you. People who want the big names, I'm with you on that. I'm not dis- I'm not disagreeing with that. But here it is. The milk is spilled. Are we going to cry or get a rag and keep it moving? You know, that's how I look at it. Like, okay, did we do really that bad that we can't work with what we have? I like the fact you got the Muhammad Ibrahim, uh, Ibrahim, because he he can't catch out the backfield like uh, Swift could or like Gibbs able to do. But he does have great juke ability. He can move, play his foot, move through the holes. He had, you know, he's a little hesitant on which hole. You no, know, on um, his first move, first step. That's something that can be coached. That's something that can be developed through coaching. So you line him up in the backfield, gives out in, in, a, in a slot. So that's hard to stop. You know, you got McGarmy in the backfield, gives out in the slot. Um, you know, so it's like it's different things you can do. And like Brad Holmes said, I, I I didn't just look at 
Jameer Gibbs as a running back. I looked at him as a weapon. I think that was interesting he said that. I looked at him as a weapon. Um, Some people didn't like to sound Laporta. You know, I think he could be another great tight end that people would talk about. Another weapon for Jared Goff. He likes to block. He can catch. Now, he, he needs to get better with the contested, contested c- catches. That's something that can be coached out of. So, it's, like, it's, it's some tweaks here and there had to be done. But I think all in all, it wasn't as bad as everybody think it is. It wasn't no, It wasn't an F. C plus, B minus maybe. It wasn't an F though. I don't think it was an F. Because, you know, again, Brian Branch and one of the best um, on in, in, in the draft was good. Let's see what happens when he gets on the field. Now I'm anticipating, or how to say, waiting with um, bated breath. Did I say that right? It was bated breath. I don't know. I haven't heard it saying it so long. But I'm waiting to see what's going to happen in August when, I, when preseason start. Then to the regular season. But I'll get down to the comments. Let's chop it up. Don't come with the nonsense, though. Let's let's have a a, a real meaningful thought process, thought provoking conversation. You know, the nonsense is just not. I mean, I heard enough negative about this. I just want to see what people think about this perspective and this looking at it from this standpoint. You know, because anybody getting this, oh, they suck. Okay, why you say they suck? Oh, they trash. Or why? Why is a trash thing? Why is it trash? Let me know. Or what I say? What you say don't make sense. Why it don't make sense? Tell me why. Anyway, like, share, subscribe. Please hit that like button because you know how YouTube is about that algorithm. And then, you know, like I said before, if you want to check us out live, where we can get more in depth and we can get interactive. Four p.m. Monday. 4 p.m. Thursday, Eastern Standard Time. Jump in. Until next time, peace.